Although breastfeeding is a natural method of providing nutrition for your baby, it is not without its difficulties. Sadly, there are times when well-meaning deeds have unexpected results. We highlight 10 typical breastfeeding mistakes in this video. It's the Mom Hack YouTube channel. Subscribe and let's get started. Mistake number one, get a pacifier and a formula bottle just in case. While having these items on hand might seem like good planning, introducing a pacifier or a formula too early can interfere with breastfeeding. Sucking on a pacifier can lead to nipple confusion, making it difficult for a baby to latch onto the breast properly. Mistake number two, I am willing to endure even painful feeding for the sake of my baby. Pain during breastfeeding is a signal that something may be wrong with the latch or positioning. Enduring pain can lead to nipple damage and may discourage the baby from latching effectively. Seek support from a lactation consultant to address any pain or discomfort. Mistake number three, buy the formula in the maternity hospital and use it if the milk does not come immediately. Using formula in the early days can interfere with establishing a robust milk supply. It's normal for milk to take a few days to come in fully and early formula use can impact the baby's ability to latch and stimulate milk production. In the first days you have no milk, but you have colostrum. You don't need a lot of it, because it is more nutritious than milk. The baby needs to suckle to stimulate the production of milk or colostrum. Mistake number four, a baby can consume the required amount of milk in just 15 minutes, so there's no need to keep her at the breast for longer than necessary. Babies benefit from both the foremilk and hind milk. It's essential to allow the baby to nurse until satisfied to ensure they receive the necessary nutrients and calories for healthy growth and development. Mistake number five, to determine how much milk a mother has, you need to do a control weighing or pump the milk and determine its amount. Breastfeeding is a dynamic process, and a baby's needs change. Instead of focusing on the quantity of milk, pay attention to signs of adequate intake, such as diaper output, weight gain, and the baby's overall contentment after feeds. You will never be able to know the real amount of milk in your breasts if you decide to pump yourself. There are several reasons for this. First, pumping is not as effective as sucking. Secondly, milk is produced in the process of sucking. Mistake number six, it is important to pump the remaining milk after breastfeeding to prevent it from becoming stagnant. Breasts work on a supply and demand basis. Pumping after breastfeeding can signal the body to produce more milk than necessary and may contribute to oversupply. Only pump when necessary or for specific reasons, such as returning to work. Mistake number seven, feed a little with the formula. It will be more reliable. While supplementing with formula is sometimes necessary, frequent use can impact milk supply. Seek guidance from a lactation consultant before introducing formula to address any breastfeeding concerns. Mistake number eight, if the baby sleeps well and for a long time, there is no need to wake her up. A hungry baby will not sleep. Newborns typically need to feed every two minus three hours and sometimes even more often even waking them if necessary. Sleeping for extended periods without feeding can lead to dehydration and insufficient weight gain. Mistake number nine, when the weather is hot, it is important for the baby to stay hydrated by drinking water. Breast milk provides all the hydration a baby needs, even in hot weather. Offering water to a breastfeeding newborn can interfere with their caloric intake and may lead to breastfeeding challenges. Mistake number 10, to make a mistake in the calculations and not take into account the physiological loss of weight. Babies often lose a small amount of weight in the first days after birth, up to 10%. It's essential to consider this physiological weight loss during control weighing. For example, a baby was born with a weight of 3,250 grams. On the second day, he weighed 3,100 grams. In a month, 3,700 grams. So, the increase for a month was 600 grams. These are correct calculations. Breastfeeding is a learning process for both mothers and babies, and avoiding these common mistakes can contribute to a more positive and successful breastfeeding experience.